This is a quick tutorial for using the Unreal Engine tools for Kingdom Hearts 3. There are a collection of data tables and data assets that are used to modify data in Kingdom Hearts 3. For now, the only complete modules are the base param data, level up data, and chr init data. The first thing we're going to be going over are the data tables, which are the base param data and level up data modules. There are two ways to go about editing this. The most simple method is to just go into Unreal Engine 4. Go to the data table you want to make. Right click. Go to miscellaneous data table. From here, you could pick the type of data table you want to make. In this case, I'm going to just quickly do a base param data table. Now, we could name this after any NPC in the game. I'm going to just go with NEX01 level up data. And this will give you a blank data table for you to edit. Now, for most playable characters and NPCs, the only thing you'll want to add is a new row just once and change the name to default. And from here, you could just make any edits that you want. Um, I'm not 100% sure of what each thing is, but most of them are self-explanatory. For most playable characters and NPCs, HP rate is going to be 1. And hit points are just what it is. That's the HP. You could just name that whatever you want. So you would just go through this whole list, make any changes that you want, but the issue is doing it this way, you have to do it completely from scratch. Now, for the most part, what you're gonna to want to be doing is making edits to an existing table. So, in this case, what we have to do is get an existing character's data table and convert it into a CSV that can be imported into Unreal Engine. So the first thing we'll need is the actual character's data table that we'll be editing. In this case, I'm going to be using Sora's base param data. So let's X this out. Let's just delete that file. Now we're going to be going into our Kingdom Hearts 3 dump. Now, all these data tables are actually going to be in the content data table folder. Me, in my dump, um, I actually combined all the pack chunks since we can use patch pack files. So I have everything listed here. So I'm gonna go, go into player. I'm going to hit base. And these are Sora's base param data tables. Now, the first thing we'll need to do before we can convert this into a CSV to import into Unreal Engine is actually convert it into a JSON file that could be um, converted into a CSV. So for this, we're going to be using a program called John Wick Parse by Sir Waddles. I'm sorry for the pause. I missed down where I wrote it. Okay. So we're going to be using a program called John Wick Parse by Sir Waddles. This program is going to actually be um, linked in the description for you to download. So you can actually already see on this side, I created the JSON file already, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to copy this over to my parse file folders. Now we're going to enter the command prompt from this folder. So CMD. And what we're going to type out is John Wick parse, do a space, type out serialize, do another space, and then type out the name of the file we want to convert without the extension. So in this case, we have the U asset and UEXP for PEX001. We're not gonna type in U asset. Do that and press enter. And from there, you can see that it converted it into a readable JSON file. 
So now that we have that file, what we're going to need to do is find some way to convert this into a CSV. Personally, I just use the first result from Google search. I just typed in JSON to CSV, as you can see, and I use this website right here. So I'm going to just drag and drop this JSON file. And you can see that this actually converts it for us by itself. I'm going to hit download here. And we have our CSV file. Now, before the CSV can be imported into Unreal Engine, we're going to actually need to make a couple of edits first. Me, I use um, Excel. This could be done with Google Sheets if that's what you use. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of these two tables right here. Actually, in this case, it seems like they something happened when converting it. Normally, this doesn't happen, but if something like this happens and you see, for example, this says default across all of these, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to just have to delete this first row. I'm sorry, this first column. And we're going to remove this default from all of these above. This way we have max hit point, max HP rate, and everything listed correctly. Now this isn't actually supposed to be row struct. This is supposed to be default. So we're going to rename that to that and remove that. Now all we have to do is save this as a CSV and go into Unreal Engine. So now we're on Unreal Engine. I'm actually going to move over to the player folder. Now all you have to do is hit this import button right here. Go into your downloads and click the CSV that you had just converted. Now this is a base param data table. So we're going to use the Tress CHR base param data table when importing this. Hit OK. And now when you double click, you can see that the table imported perfectly. From here, you can make any edits that you want and they'll reflect properly once you actually cook the data asset. So we can save this and exit out of here. Now the next thing I'm going to go over is the character um, init data. Now this is located in load common. Now you'll see uh, you actually already have these two files listed in here. Now this right here, you don't want to touch this. This is more of a backup. The one you'll be editing is this one right here. Since I already made some edits to this, I'm actually going to go in here, delete this out, make a copy of this. And just remove base at the end. Now we have our initial um, our init data that can be edited. Now, what this determines is what abilities a character starts with, or in the case of someone like Aqua or Riku, it will determine their items that they have equipped when you play as them, as well as the abilities they have equipped. So all you have to do after you go in here is make any edits that you want. For example, if I wanted Riku to have MP safety, 
I could hit add element to this array go to the bottom to the new element that was added it will default to aerial dodge all you have to do is go down it's in alphabetical order so it should be easy to find the skill you're looking for and hit MP safety now when you play as Riku he'll have an he'll have MP safety equipped you won't be able to look in his ability list but it will be reflected when you're using him Another thing you can do is put abilities that you would only have on critical in this M critical equip ability. Riku and Aqua by default already have critical counter equipped here. The last thing I want to note is that if you want to add more items to Riku or Aqua, you have to make sure that you edit this right here M init item slot. This defaults to three for all playable characters. So say you wanted them to have eight items that they can use. You have to make sure that you edit this to eight and then you can actually add the array elements to the items you want them to have. So let's say instead of high potions, you wanted them to have nothing but mega elixirs. You wanted eight mega elixirs for when you play as them. You do that and you would be done. All you have to do is save the file, exit out, file, package project, Windows, 64-bit. Now I personally keep this in a small Kingdom Hearts project I have here. So I'm going to hit this and select folder. Now, once the packaging is complete, all we have to do is head over to where we saved those files. You could go to trust game content. And now when you go into load common, you can see I actually already had this program in this folder. This was for me to test if the file converted correctly. But you can see these files right here were just created. And all you have to do is put this in your um, in your mod patch and it will correctly display any changes you made. I do have to note though, if you're doing this with a updated uh, if you're doing this with the update file, you have to make sure that you actually edit the update um, patch files and not your custom patch file because the, this file in particular is included in the 1.06 patch and most likely will also be included in the Remind patch once the firmware update for that comes out. So that's basically it for the tutorial. Um, thank you very much for watching and take care.